Hello, my name is Sanjay Mehta, Portfolio Manager for Learning at Cisco's newest and highest level certification, the Cisco Certified Architect. Joining me today are Alvaro Retana and Khalid Raza, our newest Cisco Certified Architect certification holders. Both recently just sat and passed the recent uh, board exam back on February 17th. And first, I want to congratulate both of you on achieving this new milestone in your career. And also want to thank you for joining us today uh, to share your thoughts and perspective, not only on the certification, but also on the process itself. So before we get started, can we start with education and technical work experience that each of you experienced? And uh, Alvaro, do you want to start? Sure, sure, definitely. Thanks, Sanjay. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the University of Costa Rica. That's where, where I'm from. Uh, that's where I started working in communications at a small uh, ISP there called REXA. And now I've been with Cisco for 15 years. The last 11 have been in CDO, in the Central Development Organization, where what I do is protocol architecture. Mostly routing protocols, a little bit of security, mobile um, devices, things along those lines. Okay. Khalid, you want to pr uh, provide some background information regarding your work experience and education? First, uh, let me start by saying thank you, Sanjay, sure. for the opportunity. Uh, yeah, I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering as well from a university in Pakistan. Then I did my master's here in Wichita State University. Uh, my experience with Cisco has been for 17 years now. I've been uh, working with the uh, routing protocol teams in TAC, then did a tour of ISP team. Alvaro and I worked together in that team for a couple of years. Okay. Uh, my current uh, job, I do a lot of work with large enterprise accounts uh, for the ECATs and uh, uh, SPs as well because of my legacy work with SPs. And my interest is uh, very similar to Alvaro's in the routing area. And recently I started to focus on this interesting technology on virtualization. That's my current interest along with IP version 6. Great, great. Can we elaborate a little bit further on the design and architectural background and experience? So let's start with you, Alvaro. Sure. For me, it, it really started back when I was working in Costa Rica. Uh, at that time, it was the early 90s, and um, you know, the internet was just starting to, to take off. And I was lucky enough to be in a place where we, uh, a small team of us, it was maybe three or four, that went through the whole process of creating a business case, a business strategy, the network design, and actually configuring the equipment at the end for uh, an internet service, service uh, in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. It was actually the first in the country and, and the first uh, in, in the region. So it was, that gave me a, a really good experience, I think, or a really good outlook, at least, on the whole process, the business side, the technical side, um, everything else. At Cisco, um, as Khalid said, I worked in the ISP team for a little bit with uh, some of the big service providers, mid to late 90s when many of them were growing, many of them were, were changing the networks, adapting to you know, new demands, uh, more critical infrastructure. And over the last 10 or 11 years, I've been working as a technology architect. What that means is I work on uh, mostly routing protocols, on design of solutions that eventually customers are gonna use hopefully five or 10 years down the road. Um, this, even though my, my main focus is not on working with customers, I still need to work on understanding uh, where the business models are going, where the technical needs are, so that we can design those solutions for them to use five or 10 years down the road. Great, great. Khalid, a uh, little background on uh, your architectural design side? So my uh, exposure to the design and architecture came through the ISP team. Uh, it was very different in the early 90s when uh, we were also in along our customers learning the intricacies of these technologies that are not ev never been deployed at that larger scale. So I used to support MCI at that time along with UUNED, two of the larger, largest carriers of that time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very interactive work with those guys and ISPs, if you had worked with ISPs in those days, those guys always had a chip on their shoulder. You had to be at their level of understanding of the protocol before they would interact with you because their interaction mostly with, were with the high-end Cisco development IETF guys. So you had to earn their respect. And for you to earn that respect, you had to spend time learning protocols in depth. So once you start to understand and learn those protocols in depth, you start to get a feel for the level of architecture work that goes on in the development of these protocols. As Alvaro mentioned what he's doing today, I take a lot of the work he does in the early stages and take it, the story to the customers. 
and directly interface with the customer. So my interaction with these guys helps my, uh, me grow further on the side of uh, deploying those protocols that he's working on the development pieces of it. But the depth of understanding that I developed in the early days of working with some of the largest carrier really goes a long way. And then venturing into the enterprise side, it's very interesting that a lot of work that goes inside of IETF, a lot of times people miss out the subtle differences that have between an enterprise architecture and a service provider architecture. And a lot of people who are within Cisco who come from both backgrounds get a very interesting take on the subtleties that you need to understand between the two network design and architectures. And I think that's where I got a lot of experience and exposure by in fact working with larger carriers and large enterprise and then interfacing and interacting with a lot of protocol development guys. And that helped a lot in understanding and creating new designs and architectures. Great, great. Now I know both of you are also CCIE and CCDE holders mm -hmm. and obviously have the architect uh, certification. What led you to pursue the Cisco, certi Cisco Certified Architect Certification but also your other expert level certifications? For me it's always been um, more of small personal goals, uh, more than, 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 than the bigger certification part, but more of a uh, little goal for me to push myself. Um, when, when I first came to Cisco, um, my boss actually told me, you know, why don't you take the, the CCA test to see where you are, just so that you can get a feel. And I took it and I passed it. And you know, I thought it was, it, was, it, was, it was a great exam for the time, for what I was doing at the time of the attack, troubleshooting, et cetera. And now as, as time has passed and my job has changed, then uh, that was when the CCDE came along. And so it was another milestone, another personal uh, challenge for me. Uh, and the same here for, for the CCAR. Just to sort of validate to myself that, that I can still learn and that I'm still um, you know, up to date with, with the things that are going on. Great, great. Colin, uh, so CCA for me was a career thing. Uh, I was a fresh graduate out of college, joined the TAC. Mm -hmm. So when you're working with the best of the best, TAC always had the top talent at the time I was working in. Uh, to be counted among the top guys, and CCIE was an industry recognition certification level, that you are <coughs> seen as somebody who actually understands depth of putting a network together. Uh, then. All, as Alvaro mentioned, it's an evolution process. As my job evolved out of day-to-day -day attack work, troubleshooting work, you need a little more design um, validation. So with CCDE is something that you say, okay, I understand as my job has evolved, I understand design. I understand what my customers are doing today, how they're deploying and designing their networks. Uh, Cisco Certified Architect, I always say, does not require any study. It requires experience. Sure. And for me, it was the validation of that exam. It was in fact, it was interesting. As I was writing my uh, thesis work for the uh, architecture exam and creating my presentation, there's so many things that you keep on thinking, oh, I've done this with that customer. Oh, that customer might see this very interesting. So that whole process of saying, this is validation of actual day-to-day -day work I do. It gives me the recognition that's required to say, okay, you are doing this work day in and day out. You're putting effort into this. Now you have a certification that actually says that you are considered by Cisco somebody who can go and build these architectures for customers. 